So welcome back again. Um, I'm here still in Germany and uh, still in sunny Germany and uh, on the 24-hour online event of JAP20. And I'm with my old friend uh, Brian Thiemann here. So I am recently find out that we know each other 15 years now and met first time in Bonn uh, 15 years ago. So and um, he will talk about, as you see, maybe I see a slide there. There's Brian Thiemann on it. So Brian will talk about Brian and about responsible web design. So please, Brian, start talking about. OK, hi, Robert. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, we're all on different time zones, so uh, wherever you are, I hope uh, you're comfortable and enjoying the, pre the presentation so far and the ones to come. So what I want to talk about today is responsible web design. Um, I'm going to try not to make this a rant, uh, but it may turn into one. Uh, back in 2011, it all really started to go wrong. This man, Ethan Marcotte, some of you may have met him. He spoke at the Joomla World Conference uh, in Boston. And he wrote a book in 2011 called Responsive Web Design. And this was really the beginning of the whole concept of websites being responsive. In fact, it says in the introduction to the book uh, by Jeremy Keith, that we should think beyond the desktop and craft designs that respond to your users' needs, no matter how large or small the display. So this became known for a lot of people, not just as responsive web design, but even mobile first. And so we've spent a lot of time over the last uh, nine, 10 years since he wrote that book, making sure that our websites work great on mobile. And that's a lot of time that we've invested making sure that that beautiful mega menu that you found is absolutely right, no matter what size screen, that the mobile menu is customized, it's special, it works exactly how you want it on a mobile device. Today, we're even looking at image source sets where we serve a specific image depending on the size of the device that's being used. Now, we even go as far as testing on lots of different devices. This isn't my setup, but I do have something fairly similar with a drawer full of old mobile phones that I can test websites on to make sure that they're responsive. And and I'm sure, like the rest of you, when I'm building a website, I'm testing it on multiple browsers. Because, of course, each browser has its own little quirks and things aren't just exactly the same on each one. So we spend a lot of time making our websites responsive. But what about me? So far, everything has been about making the website fit the hardware. But what about making the website fit me? We're concentrating on this. We're concentrating on the person, on the device more than we are on the person. And that's a big difference. We should be people first, not mobile first. Just think about that for a second. People first, not mobile first. So if I was to rewrite that book that Ethan wrote in the introduction, I would say, think beyond the desktop and craft designs that respond to your users, no matter who they are. As that great philosopher Jim Kerr of Simple Mind said, don't you forget about me. And that's what we've done. We've forgotten about the person. And we've concentrated on the device. Now, in Britain, where I live, the law says a person is considered to have a disability if they report a long-standing illness, disability or impairment, which causes substantial difficulty with day-to-day -day activities. Now, how many people is this? 
how many people consider themselves to have a disability? 21%. And that's fairly average for Western, the Western world. About 21%. Only 17% of those were born with that disability. So what is this web accessibility? You may have heard of it. You may have moaned about it. You may have read something about it. You may even have done a little bit of web accessibility work. But what is it? Well, it's interesting. Robert said that we first met 15 years ago at a Mambo Day in Bonn in Germany. And there I met Angie. And Angie told me that the German word for accessibility is barrier fry. It's one of the few words of German that I think has got it exactly right. It's about removing barriers, barrier free. It's about building a website that works for everybody, not everything. So who is this web accessibility for? Well, take a look in the mirror. It's for you. Web, access web accessibility is absolutely for everybody because almost every one of you is disabled or will be at some time in your life. Ray Campbell said, disability is the only minority group that anyone can join at any time. Because normally people don't want to be part of a minority group. But this is something and it's normally something you're born into. But this is disability is different. Now, that disability may be temporary or it may be permanent. You may break your arm. So for that period of time that your arm is in a cast, that you can't use it, you are disabled. But being having a disability doesn't make you less important. And just as we spent all that time making sure that the website looked great on a mobile device, shouldn't we spend that time being responsible and making it work for the person? So why does it matter? Why am I getting so angry sometimes about accessibility on the web and accessibility with Joomla in particular? It's people first. So my disability does not define me. I'm a person with a disability, not a disabled person. Now, that may be difficult for some of you to understand, especially as I know that many of you, English is your second, third or even fourth language. And maybe the subtlety of swapping the words around doesn't translate for you. But the important thing that it's saying is we're all the same, just some of us have different skills. There's a very famous cartoon. This is my version of it, just for copyright purposes. And it says equality. Everybody is given the same. So here in this picture, we can see the little girl, the boy and the man looking over the fence. They've all been given a box the same box to stand over the, to look over the fence that's equality they've all been given the same no one's been given any special attention the trouble is is that box isn't helping that girl at all she still can't see over the fence so the suggestion is some form of positive discrimination some sort of extra help for the girl and the, and the boy you can see the girl is now on four boxes and the boy on two, so that all three people are looking over the fence at exactly the same level. So this is the usual description of what is equality. It's giving some people more so that we can all experience the same. I say this is wrong. This isn't equality. This is equality, removing the barrier altogether. So instead of working out ways to accommodate, in this case for the smaller girl, by giving her more boxes, we should be just working at removing the barrier 
and then everybody benefits in one go. We're not doing something special for one group of people. We're doing something for everybody will benefit. Think of the time that, how much time will this take? Well, how much time did you spend working on making your website responsive? If you spent just a little bit of time working on removing barriers, everyone wins. Now, accessibility has four basic principles. They're called poor, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. I'm going to try and play a video now. means that a user needs to be able to perceive your content, that is, it needs to be available to at least one of their senses. But it's not enough just to perceive something, it also needs to be understandable. This means that all your content should be clear and concise, as well as allowing users to explore it at their own pace. Once a user has perceived and understood an application, it also needs to be operable. Not everyone uses a mouse or trackpad, so you need to ensure that your product or service works with different input methods. And finally, robust. The world of technology is rapidly changing, and so it's important that your application can withstand changes. This is normally done by using good, well-tested coding practices. So hopefully you heard that. It's about the key thing at the end there, the final part of the stand of the guides is to make it robust, to make your website barrier free, to make your website accessible. Just follow the standards. The HTML standards pretty much do it for you anyway. But we've got into the habit of concentrating on the design first. And with CSS, you can do all sorts of crazy things. You can make a link look like a button. But if you make a link look like a button, it's not a, it's not a link anymore. But it's also not a button. A button, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So if you want a button, put a button. Don't be lazy and use CSS to make the link look like a button and then it just works now one of the easy ways that things that you can do to test your website your template your extension is navigating with your keyboard navigating with your keyboard is useful not only for those of us who can't use a mouse or have difficulty using a mouse but it's also pretty much the way that a screen reader will read your screen so you can emulate some of that at the same time. Now, again, I'm going to show you another small video. This one is from Domino's Pizza. Sure, pretty much they're global. There's probably a Domino's near you. After this is over, if you're hungry, try and order a pizza from Domino's just using your keyboard. Now, I tested this five minutes ago on the British Domino's website, the German Domino's website, and the Domino's website in the USA. I suspect it's the same in all of them. They all have the same problem. You'll see it in a minute. But before I show it to you, there was a court case nine months ago in America about this website, that it was not accessible. Domino's response was that it would cost them too much money to make it accessible. Independent experts have suggested that maybe it will cost as much as $40,000 for a company like Domino's to change their website so that people can actually order a pizza. That's nothing. This is a website that wants to sell me something and I can't use it. So this is a, I'm going to play the video now, it's a screen recording and the text at the bottom is the output from the screen reader. And just watch the boxes as well as they move around the screen.
So far, it's working fairly well. But now I want to customize my pizza. You can see the cursor is actually underneath the modal. It never gets the focus. So the screen reader is reading out what's underneath not what's on top so i can never order my pizza i can never get to the buttons to choose my crust to choose my topping or even more importantly perhaps the dominoes to place my order now if you could hear that that was the output of a screen reader it's debatable whether those of us who can see should ever use a screen reader to test their website because we use it very, very differently to those that need to use it. Of course, we can see, so we've got a visual cue. And don't say to me that you can wear blindfolds because that's a temporary thing. You've not had years of living with visual impairment. You've not had years of experience of using a screen reader. And actually, if you do listen to anybody using a screen reader, they have it at so many words per minute that it all seems to mumble together and you can't hear it. But we can test it if we want, and it is still useful to do. If you're running Windows, built into the Windows operating system is Narrator, which is a very good screen reader. Or you can download for free a screen reader called NVDA. If you're on a Macintosh, you can use VoiceOver. Again, it's built into your operating system. You don't need to do anything. It's there. So you can at least get a feel of what it's going to do. But just a warning, don't fall into the trap of adding extra text because you think the screen reader is too abrupt, too short. If the screen reader says link with five items, link one, link two, that's what the people who use screen readers are used to. So if you change that to be more polite, this is a link of blah, 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 blah. It's really not going to help them. And now we come on to testing. How can we test our websites? How can we test our template? How can we test our extension? Well, there are some tools that will help you. Most of them are browser tools, browser add-ons. You've probably used some of them. I think I've probably over the last few years used all of them. Um, but the one I'm going to show you now is what I consider, consider to be the best. Um, it's also the one that I use to teach accessibility to apprentices. And it's definitely comprehensive. And it's called Accessibility Insights. Um, it's produced by two surprising companies. Uh, the first one is DQ. Uh, they're one of the world's leading accessibility companies. Uh, but the second one is Microsoft. And it's kind of a bit strange, but they've given you this for free. And it's the best there is. It's a combination of Microsoft's technology and DQ's knowledge uh, to really take testing to the next level. So. What does it do? Well, this screen in the background is the Open Source Matters website. The screen in the foreground is the result of the automated tests that Accessibility Insights will do. And we can see here that it's found one issue. And that issue is highlighted on the top right. It's the search box. It tells me what the problem is, that the, every form should have a label. Every form element should have a label. There's then two links. The second link that says WCAG, that's to the WebCAG Accessibility Guidelines. That's to the really boring, heavy technical documentation that you're probably going to struggle to understand. I know I certainly do. But the first link is the one where this tool really wins. 
that one goes to a specific page with DQ from DQ telling you why this issue is important to fix, who is impacted by this issue, and how to fix it. And usually depend, there will be multiple suggestions of code that you can use to fix the problem. <coughs> but we can also see below that, we can see the full path, the actual snippet of code that has been identified as being where the problem lies. And a quick list of five things that you can do to resolve this, because there's never one solution to fix everything. And this is really good. But you probably, if you're lucky, you'll only have a few of these. But if you're unlucky, you may have 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 different issues just on the one page. So you don't want to fix them all right now and keep testing it. You want to make notes. You want to create issues on your issue tracker. Now, whether you're using GitHub or GitLab, this tool can be connected to it and it will produce at the click of a button this beautifully formatted issue. So directly from the tool, click file issue and there it is. You've now got a record of it with all the details, with all the information, with the suggestions as well. And then you can fix it later or a colleague can fix it. Or if it's upstream to you, you can just report it to the person responsible. And everything you need for the report is there. What the links are, what page it is, everything. So that's really good. But automated testers can only go so far. There's only so many things that can be tested automatically. So it goes, this tool goes a stage further. As well as the automated checks, it has 25, I think it is now, manual steps to go through. So we can see here on the left hand side, we've got checks for keyboard, for focus, for landmarks and headings, etc. And that's not just saying, oh, you need to check them. You need to check the headings. It's interactive. So here we can see when it's headings, it's identified at the bottom, all the headings on the page. And it's then telling you what you need to do to check that it's correct. Because a computer can only check, can't check to see, have you misused the heading class just to make the text bigger? You know, is it really a heading? So it's all there, it's all here. And you can go through the process. And as you're going through, you can mark things as success or failure. And at the end, you can, all, or even during, you can also export the entire results as a report for yourself or for your clients uh, to show what you have done, what passes, what fails, etc. So now we come on to Joomla 4. And I've spent two years, maybe a bit more, it would say, probably, working really hard with others to try and make Joomla 4 as accessible as possible. Now, with Joomla 3, we dealt with accessibility in the admin by having an extra template, a different template to use in the admin. That resolves some accessibility issues, but not all. In fact, some would suggest it didn't improve things in any way meaningful, especially as time went on because we stopped being able to maintain two administrator templates and all the requirements that that had. So for Joomla 4, we've worked really hard to make sure that the administrator template, the administrator interface, the whole thing is accessible. So I'm just gonna show you some of the bits. Now you've probably seen skip links for repeating contents because it's really annoying. Did you see what I did there? We've gone to the next page and we've got the repeating content again. Now, this is the BBC website. I took this screenshot just a few hours ago. And you can see right at the top, there's a button that says skip to content. Now you've probably never seen that, that's fine. 
it only appears when you're navigating with a keyboard or a screen reader. If you want to try it yourself, go to the page with you, when your cursor is still in the address bar, hit the tab button, and that will be the first thing you'll see. And when you hit that button, it will jump past all those menu items directly to the article that you want to read. Great. How do you do that in an admin interface like this? Look at all the different options that are on this screen, but I still might want to jump. How do I do that? Well, there are some tools that people, that some screen readers provide, and they can use those tools, but we've gone a stage further and we've added a skip to link. But this isn't just a skip to, you'll notice that if you skip to it and hit enter, you get this. So this is a complete navigation of your page. Just plug my headphones back in. So here we can see it's we've got uh, skip links to the four navigation sections and to every heading on the page in a page outline. Now, nobody has created that list. The list is created from the content on the page dynamically. So if you add a new module, for example, to this screen, it will automatically appear on that list. In exactly the same way when you, it does this for all your extensions. So you don't need to do anything to add this level of accessibility. It may only be a small thing for some people, but it's a massive thing for others. It's there for you. You don't need to do anything. It's all enabled. It's a plugin. Actually, the plugin can also be set to be enabled on the front end of your website. So if you want to, you can use it there as well. Now, the other thing about accessibility is you don't always see the work that's been done. Tables is a great example. Now, tables aren't always evil. Tables are evil when you use them for layouts, but they're not evil when you use them for presenting a list of tabular data. As we see throughout the Joomla interface, this one is the contact page, the list of all the contacts. It's a table, and it should be a table. Now, behind the code, there's been a lot of changes here. You can't see most of them, but they're there. What are they? Well, the first one is most of you will know that the top row, the titles of a table should have a TH tag, not a TD. OK, table cell, table header. That makes sense. But did you know that the title of the art of, of the contacts, the row is the title of the row. So actually, that's the header of the row. So that should be a TH as well. So we can have table headers going down the page, and we can also have table headers going across the page. So that's a TH cell now. But then how does it know that it's to go across? That's because it has a scope equals row. So all of that's underneath, and you won't see that. But if you're using a screen reader, you will definitely benefit. Now, the other change, uh, one that I'm personally quite proud of, you can't see on that screen. But when we load this page, those who, who do not have a visual impairment can immediately see several things. Now, if this was a more interactive and not a one-to-one -one presentation, I'd be asking you what they are. Uh, so bear with me, you'll have to uh, just listen. Here we can see, OK, we've got a table of contacts. We can see that he's sorted by the title. So there's an up arrow on the title. It's also on the filters on the, the sort order on the top right. We can see that there are filter options because the filters are open. We can see it's set to be filtered on published, the category sample data contacts, and the maximum contact level of four. And as a result of that, we have one item in the list. Now we those of us who can see will do all of that without even thinking about it. It's a subconscious 
assessment of the page as soon as it loads up. And if I change the feature, the page reloads with the new settings, I can immediately see the impact. But what about if you're using a screen reader to read out the page? Well, in Joomla 3, all that would happen is it will announce table of contacts. That's it. When you apply a filter and then reload the page to see the impact of that filter, it still says table of contacts. It's not telling you anything that changed. If you change the sort order, it just says table of contacts. Now, it now says table of contacts sorted by title descending, filtered by status published, category sample data contact max levels four. Now I've made that visual for the purposes of this uh, presentation. It's not visible. It's hidden to only be seen by screen readers. But it's there to now every time the page loads, they get a full description of what's on the page. Exactly how it should be. Now, have we done this? It's really simple. You can add this to your own component. Just look at the code. It's very easy. What you'll see we've done is we're using the caption elements. And a caption element is part of the standards for how you write an HTML table. Every table should have a caption. This is the caption. We don't usually bother with the caption because we don't see it. In fact, with Bootstrap, it is by default invisible. So you probably didn't even know that you should set a caption. But now I'm showing it to you and hopefully you will start to use it yourselves. So Joomla 4 is accessible. Joomla 4, the admin interface, we've spent a lot of time making it accessible. And that does not mean that accessibility has made it ugly. It, some of you may have seen alternative designs for the admin interface that have not been moved forward with. And one of the reasons was because they were not accessible. That wasn't because they couldn't be made accessible. It was just because the people make it didn't want to spend that time to make it accessible, to make it usable for everyone. So we'd fall into this trap very often that the only way you can make your website, your extension, your template accessible is to remove all the funky stuff. That's not true. You don't need to remove the funky stuff. You just need to make it funky for everybody. So it's not just mobile first. Mobile first was great. But we need to move on. We need to move forward. With Joomla 4, we're giving you, us, everyone, the opportunity to move forward, to be people first. Now, if you say to me, well, how am I going to do this? You know, it's a lot of work. I'm going to have to learn things, blah, 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 blah. Lots and lots of excuses. And that's all they are. They're excuses. Because I can guarantee you, not one of you was born knowing how to write HTML, CSS, and PHP. They're all something that we've learned to do. And that's what you have to do with accessibility. You have to learn. You have to spend the time learning to do things the right way. As it happens, in most cases, what you'll be learning is how to write HTML and CSS and JavaScript the correct way the way that you should always have been doing it. But they're lazy languages, and they let you get away with a lot of things. So let's change the emphasis from building responsive websites, which look at the device, to building responsible websites, where we look at the people, 
After all, Joomla stands for, it means all together. It doesn't say all together except for that group of people over there. It says all together, full stop. Actually, it's Joomla, so it's all together, exclamation mark. So yes, it's an, event, it's an investment of your time, but it's an investment that's worth it. Will Joomla 4 ever be perfectly accessible? Will you be able to build a perfectly accessible website or template? Well, no, you won't. And no, it can't be. That's not going to happen. But I will leave you with the thoughts of Leonie Watson, who's one of the main accessibility gurus, a brilliant speaker, definitely worth checking out her presentations. They're all over YouTube. Very funny. And she says it doesn't have to be perfect, just a little bit better than yesterday. Well, hopefully Joomla 4 is a lot better than yesterday when it comes to putting people first. But that's what it's, it's a process. It's a path. It's a way of moving forward. So with that note, I'd like to say thank you to whoever is listening. I've been staring at my screen the whole time, so I can't see uh, uh, any of the chat window or anything else. It's very strange. Uh, but uh, Robert, um, are there any questions in the chat? So for, for, for what oh, I see, so, so for what I what I see at the moment are uh, people are more impressed um, um, with the uh, subtitles. Yes, with the subtitles, that is one part, but also with the presentation. So I'm, I'm we're not put it more uh, we're, we're not going to push it down. And I think it was was an interesting presentation. Something I, th I think a lot of people have to think about it first. Um, Something comes in my mind where, where you said so um, that um, um, make it funky for everyone or something like this. So yeah. I think we, we in, 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 in the Mambo days we had this power and simplicity. So it's probably also something we maybe should remind us that we maybe it's not everything that we need to make it complicated and funky and blinking and whatever. So maybe some some easier stuff and, and uh, more straightforward is, is, is something Sorry, may, maybe good idea. So there's two things there. I'll answer them in reverse. Mm -hmm. um, Mambo was power in simplicity. And you're right. Uh, sometimes now we make things very fancy and very complex. There's a place for both. I mean, the world has moved on since 15 years ago. Uh, people's expectations are different, um, and we have to accept and acknowledge that. I mean, there yeah, are, of course. Yeah, there are some CMS where their user interface has not changed very much in those 15 years. Yeah. Um, and they're still uh, mm. functional rather than anything else. Uh, mm. It works for them, but we can't start, we can't, We've got to keep moving forwards, uh, but you're right, we can go too far. So that's the first mm -hmm. thing. The sec second thing I want to, talk, to mention is the subtitles. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did check. I don't think anybody else has used them uh, so far today. Um, these are being generated live as I speak. Uh, they're not perfect. Yeah. They are being done. I'm using the ones generated by PowerPoint, mm -hmm. uh, but Google uh, Meet will do, will generate them on, on the fly as well, and so will uh, uh, Google Slides. Yeah. Yeah. Why do I use it. them? They're not perfect. They're not a replacement for something else. But I said that we're people first, and if you can't hear, sorry, if you can't. Yes, if you can't hear, and I'm talking to you in person, you can pro possibly you'll be reading my lips, but you're not seeing my face for most of this video. So this is a technology way of helping. Yeah, and even if they would, your your your, your hair in your in your face would make make, make it complicated. Yes, uh, and and yeah. also. 
today, if we if you're wearing a, a mask for Corona, you can't lip yeah. read at all. Yeah, that's a, which is a serious. It, it, it can sound funny, but it's a serious issue. Yeah. So uh, these the other thing I I know about having subtitles is that uh, there's been research in England by the television the television authorities that said that 80% of people who put subtitles on for their television do not have a hearing impairment they're using it for other reasons maybe it's their children are asleep you know asleep in the other room yeah. um, all sorts of different reasons so it's there it was one click of a button course i use it and i encourage everybody else to use it it's not yeah. a replacement from having real translators people doing sign language people doing live subtitles but it definitely uh better than nothing yeah so uh, i think christiana said that it uh, was very helpful for her um uh, so thank you for pointing pointing this out also um um so I think we are done because there are no questions at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So mostly comments on something. So I haven't really seen an, an exclamation, not exclamation, a question mark. Um, so okay. that can make, make something for me that is the question. Um, so thank you very much. I think you are back in two hours. So yeah, two hours, uh, something completely different, not about Joomla. Yeah, uh, I know. Okay, thank you very much so far. Um, and so I'm handing now over to to David. He's uh, he's here. Looking, it's his face. So I think eleven hours are enough um, that I that I'm sitting here and you have and you have to see me. Uh, maybe a, a fresh new face. Even if I'm not so tired now as I was um, um, six year, hours ago, um, but enough is enough for it's not. I not my, mean me, so I could sit here longer. But it's better for you when you get some. But you're fresh. also old, and you need to hand over to the younger people. Yes, so um, I always did this. So you know, I'm just 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 here because they are nice to me and <laughs> not not saying. Saying stay at home, you are too old. Don't let, don't, don't interrupt us in what we are doing here. So that's that's a, they, they are nice. They're always lying, but it's they're, they're yeah. Nice. So, but they but they lie in such a nice way. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So thank you. Other, th thank you. Thank you for your presentation. See you later. Um, for all the others, so we have fifteen minutes break now. Um, I think we will. Uh, grab some sun or, or whatever, dancing, uh, anything. So um, thanks for having me here and uh, enjoy the show. Bye-bye.